Hmm. So let's see how this works. Just testing this out right now. Um, uh, do I get the link for this thing? No idea. I always hate how uh, like these videos start with um, someone really confused by the technical operations of a thing. Um, YouTube really needs to make this a lot easier. Ah. So, how do I share the link to this? You know, I have no idea. I have no idea. YouTube, where's the share link? Does this, oh, there you go, I found it. Cool. Cool. So I think it seems to be working now. Um, well, let's see. I have no idea if anyone is going to see this, but it is. Um, it, it's like six thirty in the a.m. in the morning, and I'm up making this. Um, This commission, Molly from Neuromancer by William Gibson. I know this is not like the best angle to do this sort of thing, but I haven't really figured out a good setup yet. I'm just like testing this out now. Um, and I'll probably improve on it in the future. Um, yeah, I'm using, um, this, uh, Kalinsky number three, seven, uh, set from the 7,000 series brush for like the big black areas. I'm doing the, the entire thing and brush the, the pencils are pretty, pretty light, pretty loose. It keeps... Even if you have like um, a drawing illustration that isn't very dynamic, that doesn't have a lot of motion in it, I find that if you keep, for me anyway, I feel if you keep the pencils kind of loose, it makes uh, the, the end result a little bit more dynamic and not like super stiff. Um, and you know, I used to have the tendency in the past to uh, like over render a lot, Put, like way, way too many details in pencils and press super hard. But then the end result would be um, like a really kind of stiff, and almost like dead 
frustration. But since uh, loosening up, I think they've uh, come more alive. It's interesting, right? It's like um, the less details almost you use, the more real it becomes in a way. Um, yeah, it's like. And this is always like a good composition. Um, big, big close up on a face is almost like you could um, never go wrong with that. Um, like for the future, it'd probably be better if I get like a camera that would be mounted, but then you don't want it in your face, right? You don't, I mean, I don't want it like to obstruct my, my, get in the way of the actual drawing, you kind of need it to be, um, it's not in the way, but I'm sure there's a way to figure this shit out. Um, probably by people who are better than me at it. Just kind of maybe I'll, watch a few other YouTube videos and just like steal some tricks from other people. Yeah, you'll notice, you'll notice I'm wearing a glove on my inking hand. And that's because it's a cotton glove. And uh, The, you'll notice like a lot of anchors, we, we tend to like have like a napkin or something like under our hand and that's to avoid like smudging, uh, like a napkin will sort of like absorb if you like goes over any kind of wet ink, it'll absorb it rather than smudge it, ideally anyway. Um, but like the balancing act of like the, um, the napkin and the inking kind of um, just doesn't really work for me, especially because I keep my, um, my drawing uh, table at like a, a bit of an intense angle. Uh, it's just better for my, my back so I don't hunch over and, and age too quickly. I'm trying to hold on to a little, a little bit of the, the youth I have left, you know what I'm saying? Um, So yeah, I wear this glove and it kind of helps me avoid smudging with the least bit of worry. And uh, the cotton gloves are great, you know, they're washable. I just throw them in the wash, reuse them. It's totally cool. And we up with a tiny bit. So oftentimes, sometimes what I do is to make sure the um, black and white balance is, like the, the white and black are balanced out in an image, I'll sort of almost as I'm, as I'm inking, I'll sort of just like squint at it a little bit. Um, and, um, That'll that will um, let me kind of see see it in a, in a very kind of just blocky way, like where where the black sitting, where where the white sitting, and, and how do I make it like as balanced and kind of identifiable, even in a blurry state, you know. Well, I keep my 
I use this container here for inking, which is um, essentially a collapsible um, stainless steel cup. Um, I can't demonstrate the collapsibility of it now because it has ink in it, um, but you see collapsible. A clean one. So this is the um, this is a bigger one, and it's essentially this little stainless steel guy um, turns into a cup like this. And the idea, of course, is just for um, you know to be mobile and like kind of be able to like take my inking supplies if I'm traveling and throw something like this in the bag. And, Wherever I am, I don't have to like worry about um, carrying kind of too big, like big jars or containers and stuff. So I just have uh, collapsible guys for travel. But I mean, obviously, um, won't be traveling anytime soon, huh? That was all. It feels like a lifetime ago, and could still. Travel, but we shall not discuss the thing that will not be discussed. I'm not going to talk about that. Thinking for me is like sort of like the, the relaxing part of drawing. Like when I'm doing the, the, the penciling part, there's there's quite a bit of thinking involved, right? You're thinking about the composition and um, proportions and stuff like that. Um, uh, like with inking, it's like very meditative almost. Um, you're just enjoying the um, how the ink is being just laid out on paper, really. It's a super nice meditative thing to do. Really nice to do early in the morning. Pencils. Uh, gonna have to figure it out. Now I'm using this uh, Lowy Cornell uh, number two brush from the their seven ninety five series, and this is like for like the sort of less for the big big um, black areas, and more for like, the actual kind of line, line art, and tighter spaces. I actually don't even know if this uh, the sound on this thing is working. I could just be this whole thing can be muted for all I know, but. But it turns out it wasn't really working properly. I'll just delete it. Just delete it and uh, and uh, not keep it online. It's no big deal. No big deal at all. Yeah, definitely 
definitely be better to get this at a different angle, I'm sure. Imagine that. So, you know, Molly from Neuromancer, of course, Neuromancer took place in quote unquote the future, but, but Neuromancer is still very much an 80s novel, you know what I'm saying? So, it's still the future of the 80s in a sense. So I figured it would make sense to hear kind of um, a kind of an 80s hairstyle-ish. But you know, the uh, uh, what was what was what was forward thinking for the 80s in a sense, right? So you've got that super short, like a short hair kind of shaggy, um, like short shaggy hairstyle, I guess. I gotta say, I used to be quite into those um, 80s aerobics videos. It was like such a style. And in, in the novel, the Gibson describes Molly as being as wearing a big jacket, a big black jacket that almost absorbs the light. So, you know, you don't want any reflections on that one, just like pitch black. Black hole. I used to do quite a bit of um, work digitally. I still do from time to time, but I gotta say it's um, it's not the same as working traditionally. Um, I know that um, a lot of people who do you you know, really enjoy doing the digital stuff will kind of go on and on about how it's like, ah, what do you mean it's not the same? It's just a tool, you're using your hand, whatever. Sure, of course you are. But, you know, different tools feel different in different hands. Like, you know, if I'm working with paint or charcoal or spray paint, it's not the same as working, you know, on, I'm working doing that on canvas. It's not the same as doing pencil and ink on paper. It's like a, you know, scale is a scale affects um, the process. The material itself affects the process, and um, you know, the, there's a certain kind of tactile quality to working traditionally that you don't get uh, when you work. Um, Digitally, like just just the way the ink flows on the paper and the sound it makes and uh, the 
sort of textures that are created by the brush that are not the result of um, an algorithm, a program that someone wrote that says, all right, when you move it this way, it'll do this effect. It's um, the, um, the effects created by the brush, textures, like when it sort of dries out, like sort of what's happening here. Um, I mean, I guess you can't really see here, but you know, it's just the result of uh, physics and and uh, the actual material, which is quite nice. And sometimes you make mistakes, and then and then when you make a mistake and you can't undo it, you sort of oh, all right. Well, how do I make this mistake part of? part of the illustration, part of the piece, and then, and then it becomes a, a very unique piece as a result, right? Almost hard to duplicate exactly. A lot of, a lot of work that is done digitally, you can almost kind of repeat it exactly. So the go to with the lighting go to go to is usually you know lighting from above unless you're creating a oh man I made a mistake see what I'm talking about but it's cool I'll just uh, fixing of it will be part of the piece. Um, so with lighting, light from above, so for the lips, I'm just going to try and like, get most of the black bits on the bottom like that, so it looks like, you know, the highlights, the lights are kind of hitting, hitting her lips from above. I was just talking to myself like a crazy person, but the live video should end up being going online later. So then I won't look like a crazy person once it's up. So you'll notice I got a bunch of texture here on her hand. It's totally accidental result of my, my smudging, but I'm going to make it part of the, the, the end piece, which I will post, and it'll look super cool. So I haven't done any videos on the this YouTube channel in a while. When I started it, it was really was putting up 
um, through, you know, it was around the time I was doing um, sort of like reviewing books and um, comics from time to time, you know, for my newsletter and stuff. Um, so I haven't gone around to doing in a while. Um, and the first one I did was for to showcase some Steve Ditko zines. Primarily because I felt like I couldn't just like write about them. I needed to like like to show them essentially. And then followed a couple of other things that I needed to show. And that's how kind of the idea for the channel came about. I was living in Denver at the time and um, so I haven't I haven't done one in a while. Um, now I live in Houston, Houston, Texas, and moved about a year ago, but, um, you know, took a while to find a place and settle and get it set up, get the studio set up, all that stuff. So it feels, it feels like I just moved still, um, you know, I have been here for not, not, not in this place though, in this place only for um, a few months really. But um, <clears throat> it would be nice to do more videos and stuff, I guess. Suppose, especially with all this uh, quarantine, all this quarantine bullshit. Um, I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm not like. Um, I don't think we should be responsible or anything. I'm like totally abiding by all the quarantine rules. It's the right thing to do. Um, but it does. It can get to you a little bit, right? It can make you go a little stir crazy. Um, so, I guess what I'm saying is, um, in, in the times of quarantine, you'll probably see a lot more, I imagine, um, folks taking to, to YouTube or like, I don't know, um, Instagram Live or something, all that stuff to just sort of uh, a way for human beings to, um, interact with other human beings. Thing is, we as human beings, um, we, we um, it's not only about social contact with friends and family and people we know, you know, we're, 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 we're social, we're social animals, right? We go out and public spaces to be in places where strangers are, you know, we go to parks, we go to um, clubs, right? And I suppose in the digital age, um, we're just uh, trying to figure out how to uh, create these, uh, we create a sense of existing in a sense in public spaces with strangers in a kind of digital realm and through that interaction we can um, you know make new friends and shit. So my glove is now very smudged. I'm going to replace it with a new glove. Well, I 
anche umano. Non so se ho visto questo per la prima volta, magari. Ma è ben like Becky Cooney or someone do this sort of like, especially for hair. It's kind of let the, the brush kind of almost dry out in some parts and then you get like some texture bits along with some big black spots. So really what's left at this point is the hands, nails. The thing is the nails, I was thinking she would have like black nail polish, right? Because you know, I think you're a menser and you think you think like automatically think like all kinds of uh, goth vibes. I guess, like, I don't know, is it like cyberpunk, is it cyberpunk kind of goth? What is it? Looks like my, my battery. Computer's about to die now. So, I might have to end this video, but I'll post the results on the Twitter and the social media and like, I don't know, Instagram or whatever. Um, I guess we could get like a bit of a closer look at it to end with before I end this live stream. Cool. Peace.